So our next paper um, is, uh, next on our bill is uh, Benjamin Gould. Hi, Ben. Um, ben is a master's student in uh, ancient Greek and Roman studies at Brandeis Graduate School of Arts and Sciences, where his research focuses on classical reception and historicity in Shakespeare's Coriolanus. Um, he recently has moved and dipped his toe into metal studies, and we're really glad to have him, uh, I saw him present a paper at the International Society for Metal Music Studies Conference in Montreal, entitled Imitations of Miltonic Canon in Becoming the Archetypes Children of the Great Extinction, um, where it was very good and very well received. As a biblical scholar, I'm a little biased, and I'm uh, very excited to hear Ben's paper today, entitled Disability as Superability, Blindness and Divine Judgment in Heavy Metal Depictions of Samson. Due to the nature of the subject matter critiqued in this paper, we do need to give a content warning. There will be ableist terms and language that's unavoidable when you talk about disability and disability studies, including a uh, discussion of disability as a spectacle and humiliation. There is hate speech in the form of some sexism and racially charged terms, animal cruelty and some violent imagery, dismemberment and castration. These are all discussed in varying degrees, um, but there are not images depicting them. So if you need to remove yourself, there's a breakout room running, I'd run, uh, remind you, and you can access that at any time. If you want to know when the paper's over and it's safe to come back in, please ask uh, someone in the chat or me to come and get you. So the presentation should take about 30 minutes, including the Q&A. So uh, then over to you. Hey, thanks so much for that uh, awesome introduction, uh, Charlotte. Uh, so I've got my presentation here. Let me share the screen. Uh, there, you guys can see that, right? Yeah, there's going to be a little timer in the top right hand corner for you. Fantastic. Alrighty, so let's just uh, jump right in. So uh, like Charlotte said, I will be presenting my uh, research today uh, entitled Disability as Superability, uh, Blindness and Divine Judgment in Heavy Metal Depictions of Samson. Uh, as Charlotte mentioned, we do have some uh, content warnings here, violent imagery, hate speech, animal, animal cruelty uh, is in my paper more largely, but we won't have time to get to it today, so skirting that one. Uh, ableist language and uh, everything that uh, Charlotte mentioned are discussed to varying degrees, but not depicted. Uh, I have added some album covers, though, that do touch on a few of these topics, but I kept them uh, mild. Uh, so uh, starting off, uh, this paper talks about Samson reception. Uh, and Samson has been uh, received quite extensively over the millennia, especially in Christian context. Uh, but one element of Samson reception that is often neglected, mostly because it's uncommon if a bit counterintuitive, occurs in the disability context. Uh, when discussing the role of disability in the biblical canon, the story of Samson is not often uh, the one, the first one to come to mind. Um, the Tanakh or the Old Testament is full of narrative discussing physical and mental disabilities, bodily defects and transformations. Uh, and the miracles of Jesus in the New Testament are culturally ubiquitous intersections of religious faith and disability in antiquity. In contrast, the story of Samson found in Judges 13 through 16 is best known for its eponymous hero's long hair and superhuman strength rather than his blindness and subsequent humiliation. Um, since it's a feature of reception studies and literary critical theory to consider not only the elements of a narrative uh, that have been preferred over time, but also the deeper sociocultural forces behind that remembrance, uh, I will be putting special emphasis on the theory element there. Uh, such forces manifest as potent engagements with culture and counterculture when they happen in the world of music, um, creating the ideal space for culturally conscious reinterpretations of texts. Um, it is for that reason that I will be approaching this material predominantly from the uh, literary critical and like textual critical perspective, and I'm less interested in the text itself and more in its reception and 
uh, theoretical uh, significance. Um, in the modern Western conception, the sheer violence of Samson's actions coalesces with a broader societal obsession with power fantasy, um, which is a uh, endemic theme in heavy metal in general. Um, violence, power fantasy, and excess commonly appear in heavy metal depictions across subject matter and genre. And so it is only sensible that these themes would find accentuation through metal retellings of Samson. In this regard, the disability elements of Samson's story elements equally, if not more central to the narrative resolution than superhuman strength or betrayal have been widely neglected. It is therefore the work of this presentation to perform a disability studies reading of the biblical narrative of Samson and to show how its reception in a particular thrash metal song in the context of a broader Samson corpus accentuates that reading. It bears mentioning, however, that most bands and artists that have received Samson in their musical catalogs have chosen to focus almost exclusively on Samson's superhuman strength and his betrayal into the hands of his en enemies by the prostitute Delilah. Uh, these depictions across genres of heavy metal and popular music, including the Death Wish of Samson, The Grateful Dead, Bruce Springsteen, Neil Sedaka, The Cranberries, Pixies, etc. Um, all draw connections between Delilah and female nature in a matter that uh, depicts women as thieves, betrayers, temptresses, and other common misogynistic tropes. Uh, though the Tanakh does not explicitly state whether Delilah is Jew or Gentile, the prevailing interpretation has been to treat her as a Philistine herself. This convenient assumption allows Delilah to be cast as both literally and figuratively a shiksa, uh, which is a derogatory Yiddish term for a Gentile woman originally meaning poor. Uh, the term and its usage are, of course, steep in social stratification and elitism, but the Jewish people's long history of persecution and subjugation complicates this reality. Therefore, the malignity for the Philistine Delilah is more significantly connected to the Jewish concept of being set apart from the world, from the Hebrew Kadesh, meaning holy. Uh, this uh, nuance, which separates it from general misogyny, is largely either not understood or lost in translation when the story of Samson is received in popular culture. Uh, while the degree of misogyny varies from depiction to depiction and could generously be attributed to the historical contexts, both of the original text and of the receptions themselves, there is a clear connection between Samson's loss of divine strength and his union with Delilah. Uh, the Midrash even attributes the breaking of Samson's Nazarite covenant and the loss of his strength to his relationship with the foreign Delilah and not to the actual cutting of his hair. I acknowledge this threat of misogyny, though it is outside of the scope of this research. Uh, instead, it is my hope that the use of the neglected disability studies lens will broaden the application of Samson reception rather than restrict it. Uh, and that brings us to Tourniquet. Um, it should come as no surprise that this hypermasculine and tragic narrative would find itself represented in heavy metal. Uh, though the general reception of Samson in music across genres has been briefly mentioned, the remainder of this presentation will discuss Samson's reception in the song and Hakore by Christian thrash metal band Tourniquet. Uh, according to Jacob Folk, Tourniquet describes their sound as Beethoven meets Frankenstein uh, due to the founding member uh, Ted Kirkpatrick's love for classical music and blended with technical metal, uh, making the band style itself a kind of reception. Uh, the band was incredibly prolific while it was active, uh, producing 32 releases over 32 years from 1990 to 2022. Uh, the band's final release, Gazing at Medusa, featured Tim Owens of Judas Priest and Dean Castronova of Journey and Revolution Saints on vocals, and Chris Poland of Megadeth and OHM on guitar. 
there is therefore a significance to tourniquet's catalog of reception that has garnered the attention and collaboration of established and legendary figures in the metal scene. Um, Gazing at Medusa was tourniquet's last release, so technically those 32 releases happened over 29 years instead of 32. Um, very, very prolific. So I'm going to play just a brief snippet from Gazing at Medusa to give you guys an idea of their sound uh, their, at, at the end of their catalog before jumping back to uh, their earliest releases. Can we hear that? Is that good? Uh, did you share audio and optimize for video clip? Did you I thought I did. You might have to unshare, and then when you share again, click those boxes. Let me see. Okay, let me see. I was pretty sure I did. Let me drop. I my apologies. Let me drop this real quick. Sorry, guys. Oh, there it is. Share sound, optimize for video. Got it. Okay. Back to it. <laughs> Cover your face, try to seal your eyes. Innocence is set to deserve the skies. Look upon her face, you will witness your demise. As you turn to stone, there will be no cries. The later broke his stone of those who came before, who tried to fail and lost the war, who came to conquer but her weapon ignored. Medusa! And she will turn you into stone. Struggle once is on the planet. You need only to be stale. Trials come and trials go. He will fight your battle foe. Gazing at Medusa! All right. Um, and so that was their sound at the end of their catalog. Uh, Tourniquet's 1992 song, and Hakore, uh, though stylistically quite different from the 2019 Gazing at Medusa, still does the work of receiving a culturally relevant story from antiquity and adding new dimension to it. Uh, Samson's infamous vanquishing of a Philistine host with a donkey jawbone and the divine sprouting of the river and Hakore in Judges 15 is the subject matter uh, for this particular song. And in their rendition of the Samson narrative, Tourniquet chooses to focus on Samson's covenant with God while juxtaposing God's faithfulness with Samson's sin. The song concludes with a unique interpretation of Samson's demise that unifies the oft-discussed river and Hakore with his final act of judgment and redemption. And so here will be a little snippet of this one, which is quite different. So yes, uh, enough of that. <laughs> uh, not knocking thrash or anything. It's just not really my style. Um, but uh, what really stands out here are is the lyrical content, right? So here I can show you, th these are the uh, lyrics for the song, which we will get into in depth uh, quite shortly. Um, but uh, most, I think, significantly, 
is a lot of this thematic overlap uh, that this song has with uh, classic heavy metal themes, uh, such as hypermasculinity with Man of War, Symphony X, uh, the idea of beautiful gore encapsulated in Death Clock, Cannibal Corpse, Shadow of Intent, uh, the idea of punishment, which is a favorite theme for bands like Iron Maiden uh, and Christian bands like Impending Doom, For Today, and Fit for a King. Um, and lastly, the idea, uh, this concept of fatalism uh, that's embodied in the phrase death in the end is a favorite theme of many metal bands, such as Iron Maiden, Impending Doom, and Merciful Fate. Um, it really is kind of black metal in general. <laughs> Um, and so jumping into the, uh, lyrical analysis, the lyrics first words, uh, place significant emphasis on Samson's Nazarite covenant, which sets him apart from the other members of his Jewish community. Interestingly, while this concept of being set apart is integral to the Jewish identity and central to the rabbinic condemnation of marriage to non-Jews, tourniquet seems to attribute Samson being set apart to his Nazarite oath specifically. Uh, this first line therefore establishes Samson as doubly isolated or elite, an elitism that forms the basis for the same line's claim about his leadership as a judge. Uh, this covenant relationship with God acts as the source for Samson's divine strength from the beginning of the song, as this second line emphasizes. Samson's superhuman strength and renown as uh, flowing from that covenant. Uh, is a key feature um, of this interpretation, um, but that is unique to Tourniquet. But a feature of their interpretation common to others is its emphasis on the cutting of Samson's hair at the expense of a discussion of other areas in which he transgressed his Nazarite oath. Uh, though Tourniquet's song about Samson uh, himself are adamant, uh, though both Tourniquet's song and Samson himself are adamant about Samson's abstinence from wine and cutting his hair, uh, as in Judges 16, 17, Tourniquet's version also glosses over the inter integral Nazarite oath against contact with anything dead. Samson also seemed to care little for this aspect of being a Nazarite, uh, as he touched dead and decaying things often throughout the narrative of the Book of Judges. Um, but uh, the the fact that they eliminated that from the song leaves the only transgression that Samson commits as his uh, engagement with Delilah. Um, next, the song joins Samson's purpose with his mechanism for tapping into divine power. Uh, these lines here, uh, living ungodly for you wasn't meant, entry to freedom is why you were sent. Uh, proceed, call to me and I will be the spring, call to me in need, for I can turn your pain into strength. Uh, though the song places characteristic emphasis on Samson's hair, it also emphasizes through repetition the significance of Samson's faith, and in this version, a vocal invocation of the Ruach Adonai. Uh, a key element of this vocal invocation addition is the discussion of agency. Not only does Samson need to call on the Lord for his strength, but he also must demonstrate a faith that can be transmuted into physical power. This creates some tension with the ableist strongman archetype often associated with Samson, uh, as the source of his power does not dwell within him, but without uh, this external spiritual source of power could even conceivably be accessed, whether Samson possessed raw physical strength or not. This idea has implications for a reimagining of Samson's body physically shrinking when his access to divine power is severed, or of Samson being physically frail and weak when he tears down the Philistine palace, uh, or just in general, though this reading is not without complication. Uh, then, then we have the use of the verb sever to describe Samson's loss of divine power in this comparison. Uh, and it, this use of this word strengthens the imagery of disability through amputation. 
Finally, the allusion to the river and Hakore, uh, which translates in Hebrew to the stream of him who calls, arrives, uh, but it is immediately contrasted with Samson's sin. Since this version glosses over Samson's other violations of his Nazarite vow, that leaves, as I said before, the only sin emphasized as his union with non-Jewish women. Uh, the crux of this reading centers on the second to last couplet here. Uh, this one. Uh, whether other musical interpretations uh, tend to put all the blame on Delilah, uh, Tourniquet's version discusses Samson's agency and fault in the matter, a valuable acknowledgement of context that often goes unmentioned. This acknowledgement of agency also enables Tourniquet's interpretation of Samson to be applied to the modern Christian listener or audience member in the final couplet. Uh, the use of Samson as an example, commonly used to promote hypermasculinity or misogyny, invokes an anachore from within for the modern Christian, also known in this context as the Holy Spirit. Though the Jewish tradition has no concept of the Christian doctrine of the Trinity, it is common in Christian interpretations of the Tanakh to treat the Ruach Adonai as the Holy Spirit, which accounts for Tourniquet's conflation, in my opinion. The application to the modern Christian may also explain the song's emphasis on a vocal invocation of the spirit of the Lord, which is not present in the version in the Tanakh. So final takeaways. Uh, the union of Enhakore in Judges 15 and Samson's heroic demise in Judges 16 is unique to Tourniquet's interpretation and adds greater dimension and clarity to a disability studies reading of the narrative. Uh, though Samson massacred a thousand Philistines alone in the desert, he only did so after the power of the Ruach Adonai moved upon him. Judges 15, 14. The sprouting of the stream and Hakore after this incident was a sign of God's faithfulness to Samson for acting as his divine instrument. But Samson disregarded that faithfulness by continuing to forsake his Nazarite vow. Only after being blinded and imprisoned does Samson invoke the Ruach Adonai for aid in avenging his disability. And in, turn, in Tourniquet's interpretation, this invocation in the Philistine palace is a kind of enhakore provision in the desert. Significantly, this enhakore from within is a stream to which Samson would not have needed to turn had he still possessed his sight and strength. Though enhakore was provided wholly by the Lord, this provision only happened after Samson's great battle and after Samson entreated the Lord for aid. This element of Samson's agency is mirrored in Judges 16, 28, and 30 when he pleads with the Lord to remember him and let him die with the Philistine. Samson's blindness and enslavement is therefore instrumental in his ultimate glorification of the Hebrew Adonai through his sacrifice. The union of the river and Hakore and Samson's heroic demise typifies a modern Christian metal interpretation of the story of Samson uh, that does not fall prey as much to the misogynistic tropes common to other Samson interpretations in music and other media. Uh, this reimagining is conducive to a more inclusive interpretation of Samson's strength and demise, one that makes room for alternate understandings of Samson's masculinity in the realm of blindness and disability as catalysts for renewed superability. Thank you. And here are my sources. All my sources.